The Power, the power three, 3 will remake thee. The, the Power 3 will reboot thee. The Power 3 will revive thee. Does that mean there's going to be a third Charmed? Possibly. Is it possibly? In 20 years. <laughs> or a Netflix special next year. Oh, With actually. The OG. Original cast. Mm -hmm. That's true. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we'll be talking about that too. Because we today, will. what are we talking about? Charmed. Charmed. So, yes. Yeah, so, today we're talking about the CWs and the WBs, Charmed. Mm -hmm. uh, one version starring three white girls. This one, star the most recent one, starring Latinas. Yes. And uh, I guess we're going to figure out how we feel about this. I hope we do. I'm Rolando. And I'm Nicole. And this is Remakes, Reboots, and Revivals. An original podcast about. Unoriginality. Unoriginality. All righty, guys. Welcome. Uh, we took kind of a break last week with our mini-sode. We talked about Harry Potter. I hope you enjoyed that. But now, Rolando is back from his bachelor party and his crazy work week. Mm -hmm. And we're discussing a different band of wizards, witches, witchcraftery. Warlocks. They don't have wizards. Whatever. Oh, they do. Different types of There's magic. wizards in Charmed? Yeah. I mean, there are people with that name. They use that title. Mm. Wizards. Yeah, I think so. Okay. And just a bunch of supernatural stuff. Supernatural. Yeah, this week we're discussing Charmed. So with us, as always, is our producer, who keeps us in check and all that, Eddie Z, who also is a big fan of Charmed. I love that show. It's one of, is it I one of your favorites? Show. It's one of my favorites. Of, yeah, of that, yeah, of that time. It's, my, it's uh, one of my cult classic favorites. That's awesome. So you grew up watching this? Uh, yes. Okay. Big fan of Sharon Doherty. So I've actually like watched everything that Sharon Doherty has been in. Oh, wow. So Char Including the new uh, 90210. Um, I haven't catched that yet. Not Wait, yet. was she in it? Yeah, yeah she, she was in it. it yeah. Oh, good for her. But yeah. I recently I had um, the pleasure to spoilers alert, but to see her on the first episode of this season of Riverdale. Because yes, because uh, Luke Perry passed away, obviously, right? And uh, he played the Archie's father in the show. So I thought it was a nice little honor to kind of bring her for the episode where his character dies. Saving mm -hmm. hers. She, yeah, she kind of gives a prayer. She's like kind of, it was a it was a kind of a bittersweet moment. You didn't actually catch it. We were watching it together. And we're like, oh, that's kind of so sweet because of 90210. And Eddie's at that moment, it snapped. And she's like, oh, my God, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, big fan of Sharon Doherty. And okay, so. cool. And what about you, Ro? Did you watch the show? Uh, okay, so I only really saw when the show was coming out. Okay. The, I only saw like the first two seasons, really. Yeah. I caught the first two seasons. Uh, by season three, like Phoebe is involved in a relationship with uh, the demon Cole. And I kind of started dipping out there anyway. And uh, mm -hmm. then I think I remember watching the season finale because I think they were announcing that like one sister will die. And I wasn't aware of the behind the scenes drama that was going on so we would come to learn that like Shannon Doherty was off the show because she was feuding with uh, Alyssa Milano and I think I'm getting ahead of myself you are definitely but, and, but at the same time even if you've never watched Charmed you know the drama there <laughs> so that's like a big thing about that show yeah um, never watched it. Uh, I wasn't really a WB girl. My sister was a big Buffy fan, mm -hmm. but like that's about all that we watched on WB. Really? You know? But by you know what? By eleven, my favorite movie was Sunset Boulevard, so uh -huh. I was already watching like movie musicals and stuff no, from like I, the MGM era. Yeah, I was a big WB. I was their target demo. Yeah, <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think you still are. Like I, uh, yeah. You know what? The fact that I'm watching Archie is proof that I I do still watch it. Plus, you yeah. know. I, it's so interesting. I think like the WB has kind of found like this the WB well then WB now CW but they've always had like this interesting demo of doing kind of trash TV for like not tweens but like slightly like teens I mm -hmm. guess like teen drama like Gossip Girl yeah. Dawson's Creek Buffy the Vampire Slayer like this is all for like more youthful audiences for sure and yet somehow they also end up getting garnering like an adult audience at, at the same time okay and Charmed I think. For sure, I think it was skewed more adult than teen because you had like older actresses and uh, they were kind of going through like adult problems. Unlike Buffy the Vampire Slayer where like Sarah Michelle Gellar's Buffy was going through high school drama. Very true. Even though I would say that there was definitely a, a switch in like the demographics, I think maybe, or in what the show was focusing on. Throughout its eight seasons that it was on. It was on for a long time. Yeah, it's crazy that the show lasted eight season, con seasons, considering Shannon Doherty was kicked out. Pretty early. Quit, like, yeah. At the end of season three. Yeah. And 
I mean, originally the show was supposed to be her her big comeback. Like even a comeback, but like, you know, she was off of nine oh two one oh again because of internal fighting that she was having with other cast members, Jenny Garth. Yeah. And I think Tori Spelling. And uh as a result, like she needed a new vehicle to kind of like keep propelling her star power mm-hmm. and Charm was supposed to be this one. However, Alyssa Milano, that sneaky little bitch. I'm kidding, guys. <laughs> so I like, I like Alyssa Milano. Definitely don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Alyssa Milano, like, she ended up becoming the major star. And uh, it kind of rubbed Shannon Doherty the wrong way. And, you know, Alyssa Milano started Just getting... Egos. Now, Healthy uh, egos, man. I mean, I think... So, obviously, I had to rewatch the show. Mm-hmm. I didn't appreciate the show as much as I do now. Uh-huh. Because rewatching the show is just like, shit. Shannon Doherty was really good in this show. She was. So, okay. So, obviously, we're talking about Charmed. Before we get into a little bit of history, when the show came out, let's talk about 1998. Do you remember uh, 1998? What season of Buffy was it? So, yeah. So, we're season two of Buffy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what else is Felicity, I think, is a thing on the WB. I think, actually, this might be the first season the of Felicity. The first season. Well, you know what else came out that year was Dawson's Creek. Dawson's Creek, which had another great theme song. Yeah. I don't want to wait for my life. To be home. <laughs> uh, also, that 70s show debuted and yeah. Will and Grace, which we covered in an episode called Do Gays Need a Fag Hag? Well, enough rolling down memory lane. This was 21 years ago, and that is when Charmed debuted on the WB. With- I am here. Um, so this show was created by a woman named Constance M. Burge. Um, I think she created another show that didn't do that well called Savannah. Oh, I loved Savannah too. Yeah, you love Savannah? <laughs> I did. That show was... It had like the line and it's probably one of those things that get, get misquoted, but uh-huh. it's like my, my co-workers do it all the time. She goes, um, there was a line in the show that was like, you like my sister. And it's just like that line always kind of blew up for some it, reason. Uh, the show, that show was so terrible. I actually, I was really young when this show came out, but I remember the reason I used to watch it was because it was like pretty scandalous, like lots of sex going on in that show. Uh. And I was like a little, you know, preteen child, just like, ooh, this is so hot and sexy. Yeah. <laughs> As a preteen child. <laughs> Well, so uh, in 1988, the WB, they were really looking for a new drama series. Um, You know, they wanted something that was kind of like more interesting than another program on their channel called The Seventh Heaven, if we remember that show. I do. Damn, man. I was a CW stan. WB stan, I guess. For (laughs) sure. They wanted something a little bit more risky. So they had Spelling Television of Aaron Spelling, Mm -hmm. 90210 fame. Tori Spelling's father. Tori Spelling's papa. And uh, they also wanted to kind of benefit from the success of things like The Craft. That mm-hmm. came out two years earlier. And Practical Magic that came out in 1998. <laughs> so it was also, oh, wow. You know, they might be doing a thing that we're, so we're going to have to cover Practical Magic. Oh, I can't wait to rip apart that movie. <laughs> wait, Practical Magic is one with Sandra, Sandra Bullock, Bullock and, and Nicole, Nicole Kidman. Kidman. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> okay, so um, definitely they were trying to go on to this uh, popularity now of like witches uh-huh. in our culture. And so this is season charged. two of Buffy. I mean, they're season also going two. with the supernatural... Yeah, WB had a lot of like momentum at this moment. So it came at a really good time. Yeah. And this is kind of like what solidified, I think, the WB. These kind of years with these shows, Buffy, Charmed, and Eventually uh, Roswell. Dawson's, Cro- Dawson's, Dawson's Creek. Roswell is the next year in 1999. Roswell, and another great theme song, Dido. Yes. But uh, an interesting thing, though, is I mean, like these, those three shows um, portray strong women. Leading, yes. leading the cast. They did. You know. Not Dawson Creek. They wanted a show up. No, no, no. Uh, no. Charm. 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 Roswell Buff. and yeah. Buffy. There were more women. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But they, they also wanted to develop a show that would focus on more family values. You know, and like it was more about a show, not just three witches, but three sisters. This mm-hmm. was really important to the development of the show. And this is something that they wanted young women to watch and get um, a sense of. It was sisterhood. Right. And family bonds. So when it did debut, it was the highest uh, rated uh, debut for the network at 7.7 million. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's actually big numbers for the WB. Yeah. Because it's not, uh, WB was, that's the interesting thing about, that's why it's not part of the big like three networks because it's not available in all markets. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting. So they came up with the story of the Hollywell sisters. Hollywell. And there's three of them Prue, Piper, and Phoebe. Mm-hmm. And in and that order, oldest. In that youngest. order, 
Uh, the oldest was played by Shannon Doherty, which was her big comeback, as we talked about. Mm-hmm. Uh, the middle, which was... is so interesting that she would work with Aaron Spelling again. Well, I mean, she had the biggest success of her career with him. Why not? Well, only for a couple of years before I again remember, she got booted. I remember reading. She got oh, the Heather's. I remember reading um, about this when Charm was coming out. Uh, about, I guess he was interviewed too about taking a risk again with Sharon uh, Shannon Doherty. Yeah, that she was a risk. And yeah. um, you know, and and like working with her again. And he and he always said that she always had a strong work ethic. Mm. You mm. Know? I can see that about and, her. And uh, I mean, that's always been kind of like her her thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Shannon Dirty was only there though for the first three seasons, mm-hmm. and this show lasted for eight seasons. Right. So this was supposed to be her comeback, and unfortunately, it wasn't. No, but because of Alyssa Milano, that sneaky little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alyssa Milano plays Phoebe, and Holly Marie Combs plays the middle sister, Piper. And the first three seasons, because I feel like it kind of becomes two different shows mm-hmm. somewhat. So the first three seasons is Charmed Part One. With these three sisters. Right. Um, they lost their mother. They're, you know, fending for themselves. There's a lot of tension, particularly between the eldest and the littlest, um, especially when the show begins. And then they they come across these powers that they didn't even know they had. It kind of gets ignited in them. Because Phoebe activates them. Once again, ruining everything. Alyssa Phoebe, Milano. Uh, I swear. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. Before the drama, too, it was one of the things that... Um, that was noticed about them is is that they worked well together in mm-hmm. the beginning. They had mm-hmm. that kind of like camaraderie with each other as a, as actors. Yeah, but you could tell you could tell by the by see <laughs> by season three you could tell like there's so much drama going on because I didn't realize this when watching it. But if you look at season three, a lot of the storylines between Prue and, uh, Prue and Phoebe are like they're as far away as it can be. That's true. You yeah, know? They, they started writing things. Yeah, so. it's just like it's just the writers do. It's just like no, we we got to keep these two girls out. So the first uh, three seasons are about them kind of learning to deal with their magic, coming to terms with trying to lead a normal life and the things that young girls want, a successful business, to go to college. Young uh, women. A young... Rem- yes, thank you. Young no, women no, want. I, the reason I say women is just because... They're not girls. Then Yeah, they're like, yeah. they're adults at this point in exactly. the show. Um, Shannon's, you know, trying to balance her successful, like, art curated, curation career. Um, she has a rekindling of a romance with someone, you know, from, like, her high school sweetheart. Trudeau, the stuff. hot fucking cop. Inspector Trudeau. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Piper. Um, is a caterer. Is a caterer. Yeah. And then later on, she meets her. Well, was she a lighter. chef in the beginning? She was, she was, she was a chef. chef. Yeah, she started, she, in the first she season, she starts out as, was, uh, yeah. at, um, what, what was it? The um, Morehouse? No. So her first job as a chef, as like an assistant chef or sous chef, was mm-hmm. that place. I want to say like um, it had the theme of like an earthquake. Oh, Quake. You're right. Quake, Quake is the oh, name of the place. Yeah. I remember I that. always make a reference to Quake. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I didn't even they, had a sweet, they had a sweet sign, right? Yeah. It was like uh, the word Quake, but it was like broken in half and like, hey. Oh, that also makes sense, guys, because the show takes place in San Francisco. San, and every episode always begins with, like, the shittiest B-roll of, of San the, Francisco. Just the bridge, mainly. It's, like, it's yeah. usually just the bridge. bridge. Just there's, the a, bridge. <laughs> there's also episodes where it's just, like, just a montage of just, like, this is San Francisco. Just, like, why yeah. do I need to? And even if, if it gets crazy, because sometimes people will meet on top of the Golden Gate Bridge. There'll be scenes, especially, like, the white lighters. People who could teleport mm-hmm. end up teleporting That's on top crazy. of the Golden Gate Bridge to have conversations. <laughs> and also with the most 90-est 90s music ever for sure it's just so crazy it's 1988 and it's so 90s so any who don't focusing on the witches they all um activate different powers prudence uh prue she activates the power to it's telekinet telekinesis Telekinesis, right telekinetic yeah telekinet telekinesis so she can move objects with her mind yes um she is telekinetic Oh, yeah. she is. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, Piper can freeze time. She mm-hmm. can stop time. Stop time. And, and her powers will develop eventually where she can, like, also kind of manipulate it to a certain degree. If yes. they get to that point in time, they never get to really do it. That's true. In the show Initially, point. they just have these talents. And then Phoebe has the useless talent of just seeing a couple seconds into the future. That's not a useless <laughs> talent. She was able to have. No, that. not a couple of seconds. She, <laughs> yeah, she, she was able to see events. She also <laughs> had the. I mean, she, you know, she helped an old couple, like, win the lottery. Oh, Although she kind of also uses numbers for her. <laughs> yes, that's true. Come on, we'll face them together. Do you remember the spare board? The inscription on the back. The power of three will set us free. <laughs> Come on, we've got to stay together. power of three will set us free. The 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 power of three will set us free. 
Uh, also, a very important character outside of the three. There's a ton of them. I don't even we'll mention them in passing, but I think a big one to mention now is that the witches, in order to guide them through this new life of their, you know, witchery. Good witchery. Good witchery, yeah. Specifically, it's, you're well, talking witches about... witches aren't bad. You're talking about Leo. I'm talking about they have a white lighter. Yes. And a white lighter is someone who is pretty much to help guide them through this and to help save them. Yeah. He has the ability to also resurrect and just like... Heal. Uh, teleport uh-huh. and heal and stuff. But and yeah. then uh, the middle sister falls in love with him. But yeah, but specifically the role of the white lighter is to help good witches. Yes. They specify that because there, there are, are bad, witches. bad witches in this universe. Yes. Um. So, like I said, it was kind of two, three different, two different shows, and the first show was about sisterhood. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, there's a lot. There's like definitely a dynamic where there's the middle sister who's trying to keep harmony between the the big and the little sister. Um. The like the death of their mother is something that really looms over them. Yeah, because it was only established like it was like months prior to the events of the show, the yes. beginning of it. Yeah, no. and also no. coming. Not yeah, no, months. it was when they were younger. No, no, no. their mother there. In, in the original, mm-hmm. their mom dies when they're little kids and they're raised yeah. by their grandma. Oh, was it the grandma who yeah, died? Yeah, the who grandmother died. Before. Then, yeah, their grandmother. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Died. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was a mom. Passes sorry. Away. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I but but be... the idea is they didn't grow, they really didn't grow up with their mom. Mm-hmm. So that was that looming thing. I mean, they knew their mom, but, you know, she died when they were young. Um, and then also the aspect of having like am- am- that father wasn't around. Yeah. So they had to raise themselves. So they mm-hmm. very much relied on each other and they had like this lack of proper guidance that I also feel like like this the show is just them learning to be the strongest versions of themselves that they could possibly be. At least in the first three seasons, I yeah. felt like there's this one episode where there's this like creature of the Black Lagoon, <laughs> essentially, and it's the, the, the creature that killed their mother. And oh. Prudence, the eldest in particular, is having this weird identity crisis too, where she's like, "I feel like I'm the only one that can stop her, but I might end up dead early, just like Mom died, mm-hmm. trying to like save and protect." So there's like, there's these moments of existential crises that they have, you know. And that's one of the things that I liked about the early episodes of the show was is that it was more about coming to terms with who they were mm-hmm. and like learning to be the best versions of themselves by embracing. The fact that they are warlocks or witches mm-hmm. and uh, finding it too within this like family system. Um, so, I mean, this is my first time watching it, right? So, there were a couple episodes that I watched that I was kind of like, eh. but then other ones that I walked away from that I really felt like had strong values to them, like that one. No, the show, I, I, again, rewatching it, it, these supernatural shows from the WB, like they had kind of a monster of the week element to them, and that was kind of the same thing here. Yeah. And, you know, I think. This show, again, upon rewatching it, did a very good job of kind of like organically tying all the sisters' storylines together to this monster of the week, mm-hmm. which uh, I-, I think that's what helps make the show kind of feel like even rewatching it like not not boring. Like I was like, like I said, it's like I hadn't, I actually had very low opinions of the show when we decided to cover the show. Right? I was just yeah. like, ugh, charmed. And uh, I, it was obviously I just just the show was more mature for me than I give it than I, I realized back then because the show is actually pretty good the first three seasons I would agree with you on that yes uh, but like the sh- you know the show the show held up and I it kept my attention even aside from some of the cheesy nineties effects it was still they were still solid episodes mm-hmm. when they were good mm-hmm. I think so yeah um, also. I just I feel like the show like had a really strong sense of what it was Mm -hmm. in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I read that the creator of the show, Constance and Birch, left only after or at least took a position down. Like she demoted herself because she became so frustrated with the fact that this is a show on the WB about three really beautiful, attractive women that are gaining a lot of popularity. So things like their love life start to become more of an importance in within the show yeah like and she got Cole, really frustrated by that yeah Cole and phoebe and i was just like Pfft. again oh. i could not but even the whole Leo... i mean i mean julie mcmahon is hot but yeah he i don't know i felt the chemistry between the two of them was just like not really good <laughs> yeah despite the fact that they're both two beautiful people right but they were just like not <laughs> i don't know out of sync um and i will say that as a person who watched it really for the first time right now i i had actually a preference to crew kind of like as the matriarch of the family Hmm. her being like 100 percent, she was like definitely 
the leader of the pack, if you will. Of course. Well, um, the oldest. The oldest, you know, and like, but like she was just naturally, I think she was the strongest one, you know, like telekinesis is no fucking joke. I would say out of all <laughs> the powers, she had the strongest, the strongest. power. That and had. she, at the end of the day, she was the most interesting one because she had the oldest, she had the biggest chip on her shoulders, you know, and she had like that, the, the relationship with the boyfriend who, spoiler alert, at the end of season one dies. I know. Yeah. Talk about like killing off like important characters early yeah. on. Yeah. So it was just like, but then like, that's more interesting too because of the sacrifices that she has to make for this life, you mm-hmm. know? So she's got, she's the one that's going through this existential crisis. It has to carry her family and like has a lo- like a love that dies in front of her and all this stuff. It's just like, it's heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. And then they go and kill her off. They kill her off. And it's just so all right, bad for the show. All this, just to add, just to add some things here. Wait for that. This uh, show was, I think, one of the shows to staff a licensed demonologist. As one of their story <laughs> editors, who, uh, with his history of you know writing books on the occult and and demons, was able to bring interesting perspective wow. to their bad guys. Oh, that's actually smart because I you know they go in depth in some of the mythology of these monsters, even in just like in passing, like they don't, you know, in terms of exposition, like when they're doing their research, it's just like this demon does this, blah blah blah, blah. And just like yeah. they go, they use like heck. Hecate, for example, was one of the demons that comes to mind when she was like the demon that would come to Earth every 200 years to marry a man to try to create a hell spawn. You know? Did you know that the Book of Spells was actually like drawn in every single page? Oh, and nice. One Do you of think- them kept them or bought it or something. Or she hired the artist who did it to like create something for her because oh, it was such an intricate which one. work. I think it was Alyssa Milano I read. Mm. Um, That'd be a cool prop to have too. That like, would be so cool. Yeah. So obviously, too, like there's three of them, and the big thing in the show, Book of Shadows, is that what it is? Book of Shadows. Okay. Um, The big thing in the show is Book of Spells. Yeah, Uh, is that they very much need to be three of them. You know, like the bond without one of them won't work. So, and that's why the spell is the power of three will set us free. And that's like they need to chant that, and the power of the three of them doing it is like really important. That's like the big thing on the show. So. and then when one of them dies, you're just left wondering, it's just like, okay, how the hell does a show about the power of three go on? Enter Rose McGowan. Season three ends with uh, pretty much the witches getting outed. Um, a news team captures them destroying uh, a monster, Prue and Piper on the street. A demon. A demon. On named the, Stax. Named Shax. Shax. It goes global. It goes 2001 viral. The, the, all of San Francisco sees it. You know, people start camping outside of their house, just pretty much as the episode is called All Hell Breaks Loose. And it ends with Piper dying, uh, her getting shot, dying, and then Prue getting like swarmed by a SWAT team and Phoebe just in hell with her boyfriend, you know, not seeing any of this. And then they turn t- back time. Because of hell and her boyfriend. Because Yeah, because her just blind dick worship. It's just terrible. <laughs> You know what if you're right about that episode is every time Cole sees uh, Phoebe, mm-hmm. he's like instantly he choked her like three times in that episode. It's oh so <laughs> toxic. That relationship is terrible. <clears throat> Was not a fan of any of that. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, and then they they turn back time just to have it to the moment where the the sisters are first like they're thrown by mm-hmm. sex in the house before yeah. any of that happens before they like wake up and follow after him before Leo saves them blah blah blah, and then they're like okay a sister dies which one is it. Right, that was a mystery and stuff. Yeah. And interesting fun fact, apparently Shannon Doherty directed this episode. She did. Shannon Doherty directed it. So this girl, this poor woman had no idea she was going to be kicked off the show. She directed it. She did some great acting work, especially after Piper died. Yeah, she went yeah, crazy. yeah. Her acting work was, was, she was, uh, great. was top notch. And then I guess um, Alyssa Milano just walked up to the producers and was like, it's either me or her because I can't stand working with this perfectionist. Um, so, yeah, so that's how Prue dies. You know, I thought it was going to be watching it. Obviously, I knew Shannon would go off, but it really seemed like Piper would be the one that would have like this whole thing, especially because they're li- white lighter Leo who's in love with her and they have this whole inappropriate relationship. Like there's so much drama there. It's not inappropriate. It's so <laughs> inappropriate. <laughs> it's a love that defies all. Oh, snore. <laughs> it's the magical version of interracial marriage interracial it's yeah. forbidden love yeah everybody loves a good forbidden love story <laughs> but even then it's just like guys uh-uh <laughs> you're supposed to save not only it's because of his relationship with the other two sisters it like puts them at risk i would feel like mm, interesting interesting yeah. I don't it's like fucking you. bias to the one sister because you're stripping her like uh-uh okay that's a fair argument i would i would agree um but any hoodle uh yeah so 
uh, I guess Shannon Doherty, she had no idea, and I really felt like I was going to be Piper, but the next episode, uh, episode premiere of season four, she's completely dead. Leo could not revive her, which again, I would call bias on that because he chose to save Piper first, and maybe he can only save two of them, and the stronger witch was Prue. I think even the Piper character says, you saved the wrong one. Yeah. Like, Prue should have lived. And that was like a whole thing. And that becomes a big chip on Piper's shoulder for at least season four. Oh my God. Imagine if the WB fired Piper instead Aww. and just left Shannon Doherty and <laughs> Alyssa Milano to duke it out for another fucking year. They should have let them do that, man. <laughs> Sometimes Holly people Marie just Combs. need to like physically fight shit out. Mm. That's true. <laughs> but yeah, but I think Holly Marie Combs was very much also like her role in um the show was the same like she got along with both of them apparently. yeah yeah, yeah. Her, her uh, what's she are... was besties with shannon doherty prior to the show beginning mm-hmm. and uh apparently since the show has ended like she is pretty tight with Alyssa milano eddie yeah. is that true or false i mean yeah they and they they were recently on an episode of gray's anatomy i both saw that yeah. yeah 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 so oh. there's Alyssa milano yeah. and Holly, Holly, uh, Marie, Marie Combs. Combs, yeah. And they, they played sisters oh. who had to decide um, whether they were going to take uh, their sister off of life support. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, and that was I, Shannon Darden. I don't know. What, what, did you see that episode? I didn't know. I don't okay. want to that. I would, if we could find a clip of it, we're going to post it on uh, show notes. Yeah, seriously. Because, so wait, is the older, they're, they're taking... I, I, because I, I, I didn't, I don't watch Grey's Anatomy, but, um, I had just read the article. I wasn't sure whether it was an older sister that they had to do this or younger sister. But the joke was, uh, don't expect to see Sharon Doherty in this episode. (laughs) People hating on Shannon Doherty. Let me just say one thing in her defense. I really feel like because she is a difficult person to work with, but she's also a difficult woman to work with. That it's incredibly unfair that that's become something that defines her career. She has not been able to have a successful career because let's also face it, watching Charmed and watching her and other stuff like Heather's and stuff, she's a great actress. Yeah, she she is very, very good. And I am sure, I am more than positive that there are men out there who are as difficult, probably even more difficult to work with, and it does not define their careers. It's fucking bullshit. I mean, listen, look at the bullshit that people pulled up with Kevin Spacey for many years. Until recently, because of the new movement that's happening with well, sexual harassment. What did they put up with him? Are you kidding? Did I you actually don't know. Claims? Read that on your own time. <laughs> but he was a nightmare to work with. Oh, but he's also Kevin Spacey. And he was a predator. Shannon Doherty didn't it's have simply any... a perfectionist. I feel like people give you slack when you have wards. I guess if you're a man. No and no, they give you know. slack when you're a man. Just... Okay. So I, Shannon Doherty look, is just I mean, unfair. I don't know. Like if. You hear the same story a couple of times. It, it, you know, you had to give it some salt. But that's the thing. A, no. Like, I've heard so many stories about other people. And look at fucking, like, it took forever for Harvey Weinstein to come falling down. And everyone knew those stories. And it did not define his career. But poor Shannon Doherty can't find work just because she's somewhat difficult to work with. It's Does a shame she too. sexually abuse people? No. Does she harass people? No. She just wants to maybe do... A couple of takes, a couple extra times. Oh, she's a nightmare to work with. It sounds very nightmarish for me. I agree. <laughs> Fucking justice for Shannon, okay? I think it's a shame that her reputation is so attached to her because yeah. when I was rewatching the show, it's she she has like the star power that she does. That, she carried that show. That you just like could have easily seen. It's just like, oh, she could have been she could have been A list. I think what she actually genuinely needs right now is a career revival. She does. And she needs to just like latch on to someone like a Ryan Murphy who mm. can take kind of he 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 has this power where he could take washed up actresses. But you know, he has his he has this magical ability to take these washed up actresses and kind of put them back on a pedestal. Jessica Lang, Kathy Bates. Were they really washed up? Yeah, I wouldn't say. Washed. I wouldn't say washed up. <laughs> they were washed up. No, they, was, they were not getting up. any jobs because of their age and because no, they weren't getting interesting and dynamic work. Let's yeah, say that. Yeah, yeah, but and that's the problem. Shannon with Hollywood. Doherty is simply just not getting work. Fair, but I also I think at the same time though, Shannon Doherty just needs the right project. Mm. Like I said, like we mentioned earlier, we saw her on on uh on Riverdale for that one episode yeah. cameo that she did in honor of Luke Perry and yeah she was gr- I mean obviously she's crying because Luke Perry is dead in real life and this is a very sentimental episode but she was good she you know obviously she let's be real people people age mm-hmm. and she had had about a cancer 
and yeah. she had to fight. She isn't looking like the Shannon Doherty we know, but like in terms of her voice and her acting, it's still there. And I think that's the other thing that people that's don't what, talk about. She has matters. such a unique, sexy voice. She does. She has a brilliant voice. She's a very attractive person, but at the end of the day, she is a great actress. Yeah. I think she was better than the other two sisters. Except when she died and Piper was all upset, she really did do that well. Yeah, I liked Holly Marie Combs as an actress. Did you notice how like Phoebe's character was like not that upset? <laughs> 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 she was like accepting of the death more than Piper was. Piper was a mess. <laughs> but I then think, I think because Piper now has a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Plus, on top of that, the next episode is just like, surprise, you have a half sister. Half sister. Oh, it's that very same episode. Paige enters, and Paige, played by Rose McGowan, who I really like as an actress and as a person, um, she becomes very much the little sister. Um, I think she, even though it was kind of like, it was a new dynamic that people had to get used to. I really like what she brought to the table. Mm-hmm. And I think that she fit in pretty well with like with them. And then Piper becomes the older sister. And now she's like, and then she becomes a mom eventually and all this stuff. So I didn't like the page episodes as much just because I was such a proof fan. Right. But at the end of the day, like I really think that the perfect match for them was, well, I mean, probably not the perfect match, but I think uh, Rose McGowan was, was really good in her mm-hmm. role. I actually liked her better than the other two in the couple episodes that i saw oh just because she was still like she was young and she was kind of like more new. like uh new and not only that but like uh scatterbrained felt like yeah. even as much as phoebe i felt like she was more the decisive one like there's this big episode arc where um they take wyatt Mm -hmm. of Piper and Leo's baby and then their memories reset and then they're like what happened what's going on do you hear a baby crying and all this shit and like Phoebe more than any of them like I think this is when she's coming to the terms with her new power of um feeling people's emotions which I'm sure is incredibly heavy but uh Phoebe Phoebe was empathetic yeah she became an empath yeah like a deep empath like she could feel what you're feeling i feel like uh the page i saw like her strength as a character and that we're like this is what we need to do and we need to do it now so like get your shit together like Mm -hmm. they didn't want to go about their day to find out what happened because they knew it would be insane but it was page the young one who was like we need to fucking do this interesting so i thought that was interesting because even though like they also kind of need that guidance now that Prue is gone. Yeah, yeah. And in her own way, Paige kind of helped them with that. And what I saw, I did not watch a lot the of episodes. Thing. So. Eddie, you watched m- most, if not all of it. Yeah, it was a good ten for sure. Okay, so, ten, so what was your? I mean, what did you think of the of the pipe? Uh, page episode seasons. <laughs> <laughs> so it took me a while to to get into um, a season four. Because I was a big fan of of the Prue Hallowell character, and just felt that she just added this great dynamic mm. uh, to the show. Um, and then when she was gone, it's just like, where, where are they going to go from there? Where are they go from here? And who's this new sister? This half sister? And what is it about? What does it mean to be a charm one and needing three? And where did this all of a sudden spare sister come into play? So it it took me a while to to start. Uh, I stopped for a while, then then picked it up again. Um, but what I did enjoy, or what I th- thought was very, uh, done very well, is how um, the sisters handled the death of Prue. Yeah, you know, and and then processing that, even to see Piper deal with this um, more verbally. You know, like telling Leo, "Why did you save me? You should have saved Prue. Prue was the strong one." Prue's the backbone of this family. She's the strongest witch. You know, she should have been the one. Um, and and her dealing with her, or not dealing with her anger, led her, led her even to become like a fury, which is like this fem- what is portrayed as a feminine creature of like anger, and 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 just like sh- like extreme fury. So she ends up becoming um, this fury thing, and there's a whole process of getting Piper back, and it's this great scene where she's just banging on uh, when she's banging on Prue's uh, tombstone mm. you know it's like it's done like a mausoleum they're like she had they have her in the mausoleum so it's mm. just like the stone and her name and she's just kind of banging and it's like you you know you, you left us you know you know we you know we need you you left us where did you go that kind of thing mm. and it's her letting her go of all that emotions that she comes back you know and then takes on 
No, excuse me, not Sharon. <laughs> Sharon Dory does not come back, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but Piper comes back from being a fury. And, uh, and and it's her like now recognizing that she has to take on this new responsibility mm. of, of being the older sister, head of this of this family, and the head of this destiny as a charm ones. Yeah. And also being the one that accepts um, Paige into the family, welcoming her into the family. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just wasn't down with, <laughs> with. I just wasn't down with the whole myth. Uh, because you know you build up this mythology of like the power of three will set you free. Yeah, and then all of a sudden it's just like, well, one's dead. So what do you do? Oh, by the way, there was another one, and I just, I guess I couldn't wrap my head around it. I mean, keep in mind this show was coming out. I was like, in high school and stuff, and like at this point, I thought I wanted, I wanted, well, I wanted to be a screenwriter and stuff. So I just mm-hmm. felt like it was cheating, and. It was yeah, so uh, what we would it. eventually come to learn. The name of the the name in TV for this trope is called retconning. Yeah, and they retconned the shit out of this show mm-hmm. when they introduced Paige. And I don't know. I just like I I guess I couldn't. I myself could not make peace with it. I still can't make peace with it. These words will travel through the minds of stubborn parties and unbind thoughts too rigid to be kind. A compromise will disentwine. How does 6 o'clock on Friday sound? 6 o'clock Friday is perfect. Well, the one thing that I also noticed from the episodes that I watched with Rose McGowan is that I, I just didn't feel like the bond of sisterhood was what the show was about anymore. I really felt like it was about all the love affairs that they were having. And they focused more on, like, their love interests. And it became more soap opera-y when you add that in. You know, which sucks because it's like, oh, three attractive women. You know, let's see all the different boys and love affairs. And ooh, will they, won't they? And it's just, I'm not about that. That wasn't as much a thing when Shannon Doherty was present in the show. It's, it's a CW, a WB, I have to keep, a WB show. Mm-hmm. And uh, like the WB isn't really known for kind of tackling. No, yeah. You know, not then at Heavy least. issues here. It's really yeah. just a very superficial channel. And so even, I think, int- I mean, part of the reason I guess why Charm started off so well was also because it kind of did have that slant where it was about sisterhood. Yeah. And then, you know, Buffy was straight up about just a badass mm-hmm. white girl who can kick demon ass. Right? Yeah. So, but for the most but part. Also, Buffy's about the family you make. Yes. The, oh, finding the, your the own Sco- family. Yeah. The Scooby gang has always been. Uh, is that they call themselves Scooby Gang, um, has been about we're misfits uh, in some way and we come together and, and we're, we have like a purpose. And then Charm you was know? about a real family. Well, they're Charm, yeah, they're, they're real sisters. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, the characters are real sisters and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, I, I yeah. guess my argument was just saying it's just like if you think of the other WB shows, like they, they all skewed heavily on romance. Like said, unless they were sitcoms, they were just genuinely usually about like romance and stuff like I'm thinking like Felicity, even Roswell was about a love story. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's important. Yeah. With all those love stories, you know, you would think that at least one of the girls would experiment with a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, tell us more, Nicole. What do you mean about that? <laughs> yeah, why do you want another lesbian witch more so? I mean, we already Willow. have Willow. From well, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, so they they introduced it during that era, so they very well could have. But I don't know. I feel like you know, and at least one you know tends to be bi curious. That's true. Four sisters, right? Yeah, four sisters. Four sisters. Yeah, not one of them experimenting. One of them should have like yeah, at least been yeah. bi. Seriously, <laughs> who do you think would have been the bi one? I think Rose McGowan's character. I think so too. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Paige. Well, that's also where because we know Rose McGowan. That's also true. That's why she would have been down. Yeah. Yeah, this is true. I would have loved to have seen it with Prue, but whatever. I could see Prue as a close second. Yeah. Any hoodle, you know, with the new Charmed, we don't have to imagine it. We get to see it. That's they right. Do a lot of new things. 20 and years later, two yeah, gets her lesbian exact 20, witch. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and I get one I could resonate with more because she is also a Latina in the new 2018 CW's Charmed reboot. Charmed. Interestingly enough, a lot of people had opinions about this before it came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the CW announced in January of 2018 that that October they'd be debuting it. And immediately people took to Twitter. 
Um, and they were just like, hashtag stopped Charmed Reboot. People were not about it. And you know who was very much not about it? Uh, I want to say Holly Marie Combs. Holly Marie Combs. Yeah. And mm-hmm. well, Alyssa Milano. Also Alyssa really. Milano. I think the most upset was Holly Marie. She's like, you know, like uh, you guys didn't have any input without with the cast and crew of the original. You know, and you're moving forward without us. That's not cool. Like, why are you calling it Charmed? Call it something else. She had a lot of issues with that. An argument that I have made many times on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're just using the name, but why even bother? Just go yeah. wholly original. Okay. it's yeah, Which is interesting. But I think in this case, it very much needs that, especially because of the power of three element. But whatever. Um, Alyssa was like, yeah, she agreed with the fact that, like, why didn't you kind of... Uh, input like come to us even for a consultation like Mm -hmm. they didn't do any of that so but Alyssa was more like well I hope it's good Shannon was more positive about it you know she was just like I'm intrigued by the idea I'd like to see where they go and Rosa McGowan was also positive about it where she was like fly girls fly Mm -hmm. but Holly was not and her uh, her first uh, one of the big tweets that she made a sarcastic tweet about the fact that the CW uh, announced that it would be more feminist Holly Marie said guess we forgot to do that the first go around hmm so like now it's like is it pandering or are they being like true that they're gonna put that more at the i think it's slightly pandering i think it's more like i think it's not pandering as much as capitalization and of course yeah it's capitalization on the era that we're in it's a good word to use yeah is it pandering is it capitalization who knows so the show though let's let's talk about the show um, it was developed by three women, all who have had a lot of experience with women's shows. Um, yes. Some of them wrote for Jane the Virgin, um, the yes. Carrie Diaries, all this stuff. So oh, Carrie Diaries. Oh, I never saw that. Yeah, I never saw that either. But the first season showrunner was a man who has since been replaced by a, uh, a duo, a married duo, Craig mm. Shapiro and Liz Cougar. And the first showrunner was Carver, Carter Covington, but still overall... Craig Shapiro? Craig. Craig, Craig Shapiro. Shapiro, yeah. Constance M. Burge's not involved. Uh, and if you were wondering if she's dead or not, no, she's still very much alive. I was very much wondering <laughs> that. But she's just not involved. I think she's over the show and like what they're trying to do to it. But they decided to have this show be about three Latina sisters. And the sisters are Macy, Mel, and Maggie. Macy, who is played by Madeline Mantock, is the oldest she is a scientist and she did not know her sisters until the first episode. So she was kind of like the long lost one. She's also Afro-Caribbean. An Afro-Caribbean, yes. Mm. Which and is like very rarely depicted an Afro-Latina. You are true, right about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mel <laughs> and Maggie, <laughs> they live together with their mother. And uh, Mel is a graduate student and she is also the more liberal, more outspoken um, feminist one and what a surprise they make her the lesbian. Which do you think is that stereotyping? I think so. Oh, yeah. I would have loved to have seen either Macy or Maggie as a lesbian. It's definitely an easy route to take. It is. Yeah. And then uh, Maggie is the youngest and all she wants is to be in her local sorority in her undergraduate school. That's true. Those are her aspirations. That it's is just her like, aspirations, I don't want to graduate. Yeah. I want to be in this sorority. Yeah. To hang out with like majority white people. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Stop. Yeah. Up, up, Stop. Up, up, up. Hey, you know what? She, <laughs> she, she wants you're, to, you're, she wants to assimilate. You're, I get it. <laughs> Stop. Not true. But um, yeah, so they're noticeably younger this time around. There are two of them are in college. Two and in college. The, well, grad school and then one is in mm-hmm. undergrad. And in the pilot, their mother is alive. Yes. So the pilot, the mom is alive. She is attacked by some malevolent forces as the daughters are about to leave for the day and the daughters stumble upon her dead body. And uh, flash forward several months later, where Mel is kind of on this campaign to oust the return of a professor who has been assault, uh, accused of sexual assault. Uh, and she actually believes that her mom's death is connected to this case because um well because like you know it seemed you know her mom was about to testify against her against the guy so it was just like a complicated me too mess going on on that campus right meanwhile the youngest sister the way she's processing her her mother's death is through kind of just like almost pretending like it it just happened so long ago that she doesn't want to think about it yeah and uh you know around this time the oldest sister macy she comes across the house and kind of gets like a feeling that like there's something about this house and she realizes oh my god this is the house i was born in from the one there's a one 
link that she has to her mother. So she ends up finding out that like she has two sisters and stuff. Mm-hmm. And initially, Mel doesn't, you know, walk on her with open arms. Right? She's actually very hostile and suspicious because yeah. it's like, "Are you here? What are you here for? Money? Like, what? What are you? What do you want? What's your story here?" Yeah. And uh, they eventually all get kidnapped by uh, a white man, tied up and brought to an attic. And uh, this white man <laughs> reveals himself to be Harry, who is their white lighter. And he's explaining to them. It's just like, hey, you guys are witches, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think at this point, this is where the sh- show also diverges a little, Eddie, right? From the main series, right? Is this it where definitely does, they, get, yeah. they get given. I mean, yeah, obvi- there's many diversions. Yes. But like the other thing is just like they're given a choice if they want to be witches or not. Either accept your destiny or go back to your normal lives. Right, but you said all magical intervention reverses if we refuse. You won't remember any of this, including meeting each other. You know I'm in. I want to know you guys. And figure out this whole witchcraft thing on a molecular level and get a freaking Nobel Prize. So yeah, me too. Maggie! Okay, fine, I'm in! I'm in! Hurry, you have to join hands! Yeah, yeah. So you have the introduction of the white lighter uh, early on mm-hmm. in the show, the you know the first season, uh, first uh, episode, um, who ends up explaining everything you know to them. This is your destiny. Your mom was a witch. Um, your this is a prophecy I have foretold that three powerful witches will come together during these times. Um, this is way different from how it was for the Hallowell sisters. Um, in the original series where they had to kind of figure things out in the beginning, like mm. they would find things and like, oh, like oh, the spirit board or this book, Book of Shadows, and they have spells in it. Um, but the white lighter, uh, their white lighter Leo, Leo doesn't come until later on. Um, and also he doesn't reveal who he is until uh, later on, too, from there. So it's um, so now they're coming into this situation where their um their white lighter is like okay this is what's going on and also you have a choice yeah at, uh from the po- moment you know that you are witches you have I think a twenty four hour window to uh, decide whether you want to continue with this mm-hmm. stay witches if you decide not to you lose your powers you also lose all the magical interventions that um that were placed to actually gather you together right which so- means that Macy they wouldn't they Macy would not find them or they wouldn't know about Macy right 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 yeah. And spoiler alert, they do take on their destiny yeah, we'll and be uh, show. <laughs> go on to become the, tra- <laughs> the, charmed, the charmed ones. Yes. And uh, from there, the story kind of progresses into these sisters kind of figuring out their powers, figuring mm-hmm. out who they are, too, because they are younger than the original cast. So as a result, they're trying to... There's a lot of self discovery that they're making because keep in mind, like when you, even when I was in grad school and I was a little older in grad school than most grad school students, I'm still figuring out who I am, who I want to be. Uh, you know, most certainly at 18 years old, like trying to fit into a, a, a well, for my case, a fraternity, right? Yeah. Like I, I understand that, so I can only imagine what it's like to juggle that self discovery with also juggling like magical abilities. And I think one of the characters that I think, I think they did a really wonderful job with that is Mel's character. Yeah. And and you know they she has she is at the beginning of the series in a very uh, real relationship with another woman, Nico. Who I love. I love her short hair. Mm-hmm. I love her, her her suits. She's she has a look that I'm down with, right? But one of the things I loved about Nico and like Mel's relationship was like it kind of felt very realistic. Mm-hmm. It wasn't hypersexualized, but it wasn't at the same time it wasn't like kind of whitewashed either. Yeah. And as a result, I think, and they also had like the the I mean the, the relationship had flaws. Like they were constantly not constantly fighting, but they would fight, mm-hmm. and the fights felt like they came from a genuine place. Like it comes from uh, Mel's sorrow right now that her mom is gone, yes. and it comes from you know Nico. Being young. Yeah, like you know, it's just like I get it. And as a result, like I felt like it was a very realized relationship, and it. It's Mel who I think in the series would make the biggest sacrifice because, like, through magic, she realizes that, like, Nico is getting in harm's way. Mm -hmm. So she casts a spell to kind of erase Nico's memories of her and, like, the relationship never existed. And it's tragic because it's just like, you know, that's like what a sacrifice to make for the one you love. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, 
I think the other one, I mean, they all will have to make their own sacrifices and stuff, but like, I think that was like, I think one of the more poignant storylines for me. Yeah. And I really like that too, because I feel like sacrifice is a really big part of witchcraft Mm -hmm. and just, and and life in general, um, you have to, in order to like, so the tragedy was like immediate (laughs) in the show and just like recurring. And this show's different. I mean, this is also because of streaming culture too, but this show's different where we have an overlying arc for the entire series, uh, for the entire first season at least. Yes. Um, the original Charmed, like it was more popular back in the day. It was episodic, you know, Monster of the Week, like mm-hmm. we said earlier. But uh, that's just very different this time. So that also builds up more of getting to know each other. As they get to know each other, we get to know them. Mm-hmm. And... Um, especially with their white liar being introduced so early and like having a different relationship from the original where he just kind of comes halfway through. And then all of a sudden after a couple episodes, it's like, Hey, I'm your white lighter. Um, we have these magical abilities. Yes. Let's we- make love Piper. <laughs> yeah. Let's <laughs> engage in inappropriate behavior. <laughs> I'm shaking my head. Everyone. Do you think his um, penis shines? Stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Any hoodle. <laughs> but I will say, I mean, white lighter you asked for it. I did. <laughs> you asked for it. I didn't watch. Having said all of that positive stuff about it, I didn't watch too much about too much of the Charmed. Um, How much of it did you? Watch? I felt it was a little campy. I felt. I think I watched four episodes. Oh, okay. Which is more than enough. Sure. Okay. Like I found out about the sorority sister that woke up and that demon was possessing her and all that stuff. That's a Halloween but, um, episode, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Which is, but, honestly, I think at that point is where the show kind of does pick up a little. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So then you can probably tell us your opinion about this, but watching the first couple episodes, I liked the whole, like, they were younger and that they had a lot of maturing to do in their dynamic. Enjoyed it. I didn't feel like it was, other than the fact that I was looking at a character that I resonated with in terms of the way they looked, I didn't feel any sort of connection to the fact that there was a Latina family. Oh, interesting that you should say that. I felt like maybe they played on that a little later, but like I there was nothing that was man like, oh wow, I love seeing this. This is resonating. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't feel more feminist to me. Okay. So there were things that the show said that was like this is why it's different and you should uh-huh. watch it that I didn't get from the first couple episodes that I watched and it didn't make me me want to watch more. I think those are fair arguments. Mhm. I do so we did one day at a time and yes. you guys check out that episode. It's one of my favorite episodes. But when we did one day at a time, we noticed how heavily they kind of ran into it, it felt authentic. Yes. Right? Very much. Here in this charmed, there are they have how do I say it? it's just like there is like an element it's not as, it doesn't feel as authentic as the as the writers did with uh introducing like Spanish elements, Hispanic elements in one day at a time here i'm not saying that it felt forced but like when they sneak them in they sneak them in almost to kind of reinforce the fact that they are latino yeah right Mm -hmm. and but at the same time though i think some of the things they did nail down right specifically their christmas episode i was very much impressed by their christmas episode meal Mm. and like kind of (laughs) you know uh harry got drunk for the first time off a coquito yeah and like he just got hammered i'm just like you know what that's what happens explain what coquito is oh so yeah so the people who don't know who coquito is coquito is a caribbean drink i think mostly puerto rican but it's caribbean Mm -hmm. and uh, coquito is like eggnog Mm. but it's instead of uh just egg it's we we focus on cocoa yeah coconut it's usually depending (laughs) it's usually white rum Mm. my mom my grandma taught me to use bacardi 151 there was like i think an authentic moment of like when oh white person first experiences coquito and you realize like oh why have i been drinking eggnog my whole life yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. uh and but they keep on drinking it and yeah it and yeah so as as has been the case when i've introduced coquito to my friends uh but not just even the <laughs> coquito, right it was it. also their meals that they cook sometimes mm-hmm. like i i there is was there a full pork on the table? Of course. A full yeah. pig? Yeah, that's right. It was a per, wasn't it pernil also? They, they had pernil. Oh, they, wow. I think they were making... I could be mistaken, but they were like... They had like tostones and stuff. Like, so they have like little elements that they try. They, they're, they're, I think the, the writers are genuinely trying to make an effort to kind of, you know, kind of make these women like proud of their heritage and stuff. Despite the fact that they're living in this like beautiful mansion mm-hmm. in Michigan, which I don't think feels authentically We don't know what it's like Latino. to live in Michigan. <laughs> I mean, look, I don't need them to like scream it every two seconds in my face. But at the same time, from the episodes that I saw, like it, there just wasn't enough of like um, the mirror reflection that I was hoping yeah. I would see in it. 
Um, and that's my main qualm. And the reason why I even say that is too, is that I just thought it was a ploy that the producers used in order for like this new like era that we're in for them to get more viewers and for people to be more on board. Like, I think that it's nice, all the elements that I saw and I enjoyed it. But at the end of the day, it doesn't give me anything new that the from what I got from the original, other than the fact that these ladies are just like not white. Eh, I, I don't know. I don't I don't know if I I don't I don't think I disagree with you, to be totally honest. Yeah, like because they it, it almost seemed like they were promising like this new and reimagined version that like would fulfill certain things more like be something uh, that's more a, that interesting. Was, that was a marketing mistake. on. Yeah. Part. And that, and then it's just like usually uh, know. there's know. something I, I, we should get from this. I really there was a different look. Yeah. They, they were, you know, it was, it was a women of color that there is a more diverse cast hmm. being portrayed here. Um, so th- that, and is that, that there is these slight elements of, of what it is to be Latina or what ends up coming up too is, is Afro-Caribbean too. When uh, we later find out that uh, Mel, excuse me, um, Macy doing some genetic oh. testing <laughs> finds oh. out that <laughs> her and Maggie are actually whole sisters. Oh yeah, that's a twist. Yeah, that's the twist. Right that, that, that they share that they share uh, their father, the same father. Mel is a half sister. So um, Maggie did not know that. Here she was thinking that this man uh, was her dad, and all of a sudden it's it's not the case. Um, and then so the question is, what does it mean? What does it mean to also be black? Well, Latinx people have a very complicated relationship with black identity as it is. Like in specifically, oh, I just happen to know. Like this is, I guess, is more like anecdotal to like where I grew up. But like, mm-hmm. there is a hierarchy basically of like, if you are the darker you are, like the lower you fall on that like Hispanic totem pole. Yeah, like you know what yeah. I mean. Like there is a very ethnocentric European model that they use for what is like beauty and what is, uh, what's it called? What is almost like real Latino? Which is why yeah. I was, uh, I happy though that they kind of chose to go with an Afro. Latina in this thing, despite the fact that guys, she's not actually Latina, the actress. Yeah, I she's actually saw that. is she British? She was British. I think when we was she speaking like with an accent. M- Macy's the 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 actor. Um, well, she, she could be British. She's but British, but she's be... also Af- uh, you know she's she's African. She's, she's African, okay. but not yeah. Latina. Latina. She's not Latina. I'm not gonna fault them for that. Like they got cast. No, the there's no reason to. And yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> the actresses, I think they did. a I think they do a good job, like actually kind of portraying these characters and stuff. I, I'm still going to uh, agree a little bit with Nicole was just like, and I guess this is kind of starting to answer the questions. Like, is this a, a remake or I guess a reboot? What do mm-hmm. we class find this? A reboot, reboot right? A reboot. A reboot. Mm-hmm. Is this a reboot that we necessarily needed? Nicole. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, well, as a person who's just like not a fan can give or take this material. Um, and that there's a lot of things that I really wish that I got from any version of this show. More about this bonds of sisterhood and more in exploring <laughs> like what it is to be proper witches. Because like the first show went off into like this weird monster of the week program that just didn't feel realistic at all. And like, and granted, I don't necessarily want realism, mm. but like if you're going to pra- like preach to be something about witches, I would want to see something that I closer, like I more closely uh, resonate with witches and witchcraft. Are you saying that you take issue with the way witches are represented? Um, yeah, I feel like they're not. They're like more like wizards. Oh. And it's like more fantastical. What's the difference? It, there's a big difference. Is there? In real life, witchcraft, it has to do with like, I mean, a lot of it, if you're, whether or not you're God based, it has to do with demons and with and saints and with angels and whatever. Like, it's more religion based right. and it's more like souls based. Whereas this one becomes monster of the week. Right. And that's completely in different. In real life, so. I know. So, you, as a non believer. <laughs> <laughs> so, as a non believer, I feel like this. I feel like that depiction. But even you don't need to you don't need to believe in God in order to know the difference. Uh, You don't. don't It's just simple. Like, what's the difference between that and like the new Sabrina the teenager? I think they. I don't know. I feel like every witchcraft portrayal has always kind of been more or less the same. 
we give an incantation. Well, I get well if you revisit our Sabrina episode too, that kind of also bordered into a more like satanic route where yeah. I was like, oh, well, not true, all true, not true. all witches are sa- Satan worshippers. Yeah. They're not. Mm. Yeah. So it's just like I'd like to see for once. Fucking, <laughs> that's the thing. You don't even know what they are. Like I feel like were... the good witches, like the fun witches, are Satan worshippers. <laughs> <laughs> but I also like there's just a couple of things like I wish it was more you know sister based and whatever like I guess oh the you know, new one um no just in general all, any oh. of them I mean the new one was okay from what I saw I didn't have any main issues with it but it wasn't something that I was like oh wow this is refreshing mm, I see you know so it wasn't I, and just in, in general like I guess any package of this I don't necessarily need and nor does it speak for anything that I think is needed in our society today, Mm -hmm. especially with the fact that like people aren't really watching. And I don't even know if people know about this, you know, or care about it. I mean, it got a season two. I got a season two. It has a season two. It uh, seems like most of their fan base is younger than 18. That makes sense. I mean, I guess the CW skews younger in their demographics. Yeah, still. which is kind of important, too, because I'm glad that at least the young kids are getting this kind of representation. Yeah, I mean, I, especially considering, like, how much of the... I'm not, I'm not accusing the CW here of, like, kind of just having only white people show only, because yeah. that's not that's not at all the case. Uh, I think, actually, I'll, I'll give the... C, in terms of, like, what I've seen the CW kind of program... I think they actually do have a very wide yeah. range of like cast. I would still argue though that predominantly their shows tend to skew white. They're more popular ones at least. And uh, again, that's not well, a look pro- at that. that's not that's not really I don't fall again the network because they are I think they if I compare them to like some of the other networks, they they do at least try to take some steps. I mean, look at the Batwoman. That's like a lesbian run, like that's a lesbian in the lead as a yeah. main character, right? Yeah. Oh, she's white. Oh, well, but, you know, that happens to be the way the comic books were written and they haven't, like, decided to diverge that much from it. But I I think for kind of giving us charm, but with, like, some Latina flair and stuff and, like, knowing who their target demographics are, I kind of am leaning towards, like, yes, this reboot was needed. Do I wish it was... Do I wish the actresses here had the same acting abilities as like my Shannon Doherty, my uh, actually Holly Marie Combs, and uh, Phoebe uh, Alyssa Milano? Yes, and Rose I kind of do. Yeah, they, oh, they were just very good. Rose McGowan. And, <laughs> and wow, I feel it's needed. I uh-huh. do. I I am dying uh, for shows that have representation. Mm-hmm. I am where 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 the leads are people that look close to me or um look you know look like my family or hint to things that that um i understand also i'm happy to see uh representation in the lgbtq community mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Too. I, for sure I, i'll give you that the i show, want all those the show things handles, too yeah. but that's the thing i guess of course you know and then i get that show in the form of witches i mean like can i get that in more sitcoms can I get that in more like, you know, college friend shows? Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like. Are there many college friend shows? Yeah, there are. Like- can I get another one of those shows about like, you know how like people are obsessed with like men with power and like, can we get less of those? And like, how about like, you know, like a nice like, like Latina woman with power and like seeing one of those like antiheroes on screen? I'd love that. Yeah, I don't know. Something like that. Wait a minute. What is that? Like- um- Vita. Yeah. Like I have Pose, you know, I want more shows like that, I guess. Uh-huh. But. I will say in regards to what Holly Marie Combs tweeted about when she said, hmm, I guess we didn't do that the first time around. Like she sarcastically did that. I mean, they did do that the first time around, but this show 100% was more conscious of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that it was maybe trying a little too hard to be like, hey, guys, like I felt like it's borderline. Like you said it was capitalizing. I think it's borderline borderline pandering i could see that i the fact that it's like they're queer one of the queer and they're latino which is this time hey watch us you know like i guess the reason i think it's more about capitalization is more like the writing in the show itself doesn't feel like it tries to pander no because yeah the show itself doesn't pander to me it was the marketing of it was definitely definitely it was what the yeah and i i will blame the marketing for the fact that like you promised to be something and now i kind of see right through you and then when you watch the show itself it's like it's not delivering on what it promised but like it is delivering something that's just like okay it's cute i get it still don't i personally didn't need it okay i got you i feel yeah. you i feel you i feel but you i get you should we do a lightning round all right let's do this lightning, lightning round 
It would have to be Macy versus Prue. I would agree to that. That's not fair. (laughs) It's not a fair fight. I mean, it's not a fair fight because let's be honest, Prue's the winner. (laughs) Or is it Macy versus Prue versus Paige? No, because Paige is the youngest. Yeah, Paige is the youngest, but like Paige is also like uh, the half sister, the secret. Yeah. Like Paige comes in to replace Prue. Oh, this so. is so difficult. <laughs> yeah. But then Paige could also be like let's the Maggie. Stay, let's just stay Macy in. Macy, Macy, Macy and Prue. Shannon's already. Uh, versus Prue. I'm going to go with Prue. 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 Prue all the way. Justice yeah. for Shannon. Prue. Shannon, we love you. Uh, it's a it's that's a messed up thing to judge. All right, if you're gonna put Macy versus what do we do? We do Paige? this all the time. Rose McGowan. <laughs> no, the only reason is because like they take element from both. Yeah, they do. Um, Macy versus Rose McGowan. That's uh, a little Paige. tough. Yeah, Paige. Um, I might go with yeah, Paige. not like the actress. I might uh, go with Macy. Um, yeah, I, yeah would I, would go with, Macy, I would go with Macy, uh, Macy on that too. One too. And also, yeah. Macy has this adds this interesting. She's a scientist and she's approaching this magic experience as. As a scientist. Oh yeah, I didn't even get to mention. You're right. That I I love that about this character, right? Like yeah. she is as a scientist, right? Like how she is analytical and stuff, and then magic just conflicts with that. It's like when you know you you know you you hear that joke about can a religious person be a doctor or or a scientist? Because oh, true, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Does your belief in God interfere with what your results would be and stuff? Yeah, so that kind of stuff. And I I think her character handles that wonderfully because like she is always trying to like make sense of mm. what is the hot mess that is magic true yeah mel versus piper oh okay that's a good i'm gonna go with actually mel i'm gonna go with mel too i think you know piper after a while just got so dry and would just stand there and talk in a monotone voice and was just like so like dead whereas mel's all over the place <laughs> mel is all over the place <laughs> she's a hot mess and that is the way i respond to her <laughs> like they kind of make her a stereotype and all this stuff and i'm like of course you make that character the lesbian but she is emotional mm-hmm. <laughs> and she's just kind of like yeah she's like in that sense she's really uh she also owns raw. i think any scene that she ends she really owns she she's dominates a good actress yeah mm-hmm. uh which is interesting when you're battling cgi monsters and demons you know yeah uh, you know <laughs> she, she can hold her own and then I guess with Maggie versus Phoebe, although Maggie's ability is more she can hear people's thoughts. Yeah, she's an empath. Whereas Phoebe would see, see the in future. future. But she would eventually develop empathic powers. Yeah, yes. she eventually, because so. they realize how And, and also, as I'm, I'm watching season two of the show, um, Maggie's developing what's called foresight. Oh, so, she's, so they reverse She's getting that. images. She's getting she's... little slits of the future. Okay, so they're in, they're in, okay, yeah, so yeah, definitely a fair comparison. Who do you guys prefer? I would have to go with Maggie. I'm not a big Phoebe fan. Oh, actually, I think Phoebe would be. I yeah. would prefer Phoebe. What do you think, Eddie? I actually like Phoebe. Yeah, Phoebe. All right. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Two. Now, Paige versus Maggie. Oh, because they're youngest? Yeah. I still would go Maggie. I might go Paige. Oh. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I would go Paige. Interesting. Macy wins out when we're comparing her to Paige, mm-hmm. but Maggie loses when we're comparing her to Paige. Yeah, because... I there's something there is something very unique about Paige the half white lighter ability mm-hmm. and then the being like the youngest the odd one out but then like really rising to the occasion and being strong on her own way and finding her own way like I got to give her love there mm. I see whereas Maggie is charming in her you know like just wants what Bubbly every way. young college yeah kid wants but uh, uh, uh Harry versus Leo Harry Harry I'm going with Harry as well I hated Leo so Fuck much. Fuck Leo. I hated Leo. Fuck Leo. I'm sorry, guys. I love Leo. Oops. Leo. I love uh, Leo. Wrong, wrong, wrong. All right. And then the other <laughs> Leo's comparison. Leo's my white lighter. The other big comparison, right? Comparing the Hallowell house versus the Vega Vaughn house. Which house? Nicole, first. I am just... Um, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Even in the first four episodes, you should have seen like the house has like. I guess the the new house. Yeah, yeah. you went with the new house. I would rather live there. Okay, mm-hmm. I actually am going to go. Well, I'd rather live in in San Francisco. To be totally honest. Really? Yeah. But think about how much you'll have to pay. They did have a mortgage on it. They had actually two mortgages. They had two mortgages. It's San well, Francisco. That's, just, that's, that's okay. that is <laughs> all right. That's just, just bad. That's bad management on their a, part. Yeah, something right. like that on it. Because uh, that's how they it's got the. Crap. That's how they got the money for Piper's uh, club P three. That of course, like that house is passed down generation. It, it is. It is a character on the show. It's. It's. It's where a lot of battles happen. There's a lot of 
um, history, a history, but as well as destruction that takes oh, place sure. in the house. I guess it's like uh, all, all the mortgages, you know, hell house. Um, so that being said, what I do love about the Vega Vaughn house, which is also has the same element, is the first season. There's always a new room that you're discovering in this house. I don't know how big this house is, but it's like they walk in into a space and this is a whole new room that we didn't see before. Mm. They press a book and all of a sudden there's a hole downstairs Mm, that they didn't know about. And then they discover at some point that there's like a magical cave underneath the foundation of the house too. And it's like, how big is this house? I love it. Yeah, I would go with the Vega Von house too as well, only because it's just like, oh, I could like redecorate all these rooms. <laughs> love it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's hilarious. Okay. Cool. cool. That's that on Charm. Do you mm-hmm. feel like we have set ourselves free? The three of us? The power of three, yeah. Well, yes. Have we been set free? I hope so. I hope so too. <laughs> third time's a charm. That's yeah, what third I say. time's a charm because this is the third time trying to record this. Just episode. don't drop it. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Yeah. Be sure to, you know, leave us ratings on like your said. podcast apps. They help us out. They really you know, do. Let us know what you like, what you don't like. We know we have some new listeners out there. So please check, uh, you know, be sure to let us know what you think. Also, be sure to reach us, reach us, uh, be sure to reach out to us via email. What's our email, Nicole? Yeah. If you wish to give us your opinion, email us at remakes, reboots, and revivals at Gmail or hit us up on Instagram at remakes, reboots, and revivals. You can also find us on Facebook, remakes, reboots, and revivals. Mm-hmm. And we're also on Twitter, which is sometimes active, sometimes mm, not. Not really. Uh, more so lately. Yeah. Uh, remakes podcast. So. Cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Well then, guys, it was a pleasure. And until next time, stay, stay an original. original.